It is the touchline here on Y254. Robert Osoro is my name. I'm still having fun. This is our last segment and we'll be talking about everything that you are going to expect from the Tokyo 2020 Olympics being another Olympics that is being played under closed doors and this time round it is because of the coronavirus the COVID-19 pandemic that struck us in the year 2019 and now we are still one year seven months on to it and it's still ravaging all people in the world also an Olympics where when Olympics was uh, cancelled, we'll have to go back to the World War II and also in, 19, in World War I back in the 1918-20 there. And uh, this has to be the third Olympics, no, the first Olympics being played during a pandemic, considering the other ones were cancelled and were never played before. Tyrus Woyake is here with me in this segment. We'll be talking all about the Olympics and also Sami Gitai here. We'll just throw it in. Tokyo Olympics is here, 2020. Everybody thought these games are going to be cancelled. But at the end of the day, the International Olympic Committee stood their ground. And, uh, and uh, let's uh, talk about it. What do you actually expect from this year's Olympic Games? Remember that they've also said officially, the organizers of this event, yeah that it's not 100% guaranteed that the yeah. Olympics will run its full course. It could be cancelled at some point because of we have no control of what's going on. Mm -hmm. We're smack bang in the middle of a pandemic. But obviously you keep your fingers crossed and hope that um, it will run its full course. Yes. What do I expect? I expect a lot of dominance from some of the world's most industrialized nations. Uh -huh, yes. uh, sports and money go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. They are like a clenched fist. Mm -hmm. They're tight. So obviously the United States, China already are running away with it. Mm -hmm. The big countries, Australia, yes. the countries that have established themselves in the events that we, countries like Kenya, mm -hmm. could have actually competed toe-to-toe -to -toe with them mm -hmm. but because of a poverty not just of the po poverty of the mind mm -hmm. we like rowing mm -hmm. we've got lake victoria here we've got indian ocean here we've got lake turkana here we should be participating and competing toe-to-toe <laughs> -to -toe with these big nations in events like rowing but we yeah. don't we just hold those kind of events during cultural festivities yeah. that are normally held towards the end of the year. Mm -hmm. you, you hear there was a um, Busia yeah. County uh -huh. cultural festival mm -hmm. and there was rowing. Yeah. And people, and you actually see footage of it and people <laughs> cheer. That's an Olympic discipline. Yeah. So you see where our poverty of the mind lags us behind. Mm. We would be competing with this big nation. So I'm expecting to see mm -hmm. that dominance from the big nations mm -hmm. in field, in some fields that we ourselves could be dominating with them. It, it is good that you've brought in the Indian Ocean because, Sami, one of the new events and uh, sports uh, that has come into this year's Olympics, surfing mm -hmm. is going to be there, skateboarding is going to be there, karate climbing, are coming uh, is going to be there also some of the sports coming back to this time this year's olympic games we've got baseball softball three on three basketball and the bmx bicycle freestyle what do you make of that more so surfing but for me one that goes with kenyans at the moment because i usually see them during the weekends has got to be the street skateboarding yeah, it's an exciting time for mm. those guys who take part in those games yes. because probably they thought they would never get their chance, but they found it. But for me, actually, the one that stands out is that for baseball and softball. Mm -hmm. They are really popular sports in Japan. Yes. And I guess that's the reason why they've been incorporated this time around. So it's good to see them actually get new sports in there. Yeah. But again, talking about the whole organization of the tournament, for me, I wasn't just pleased about it. I didn't think they had the best preparation, looking at how the countries came in, mm -hmm. how they handled the COVID-19 situation. The cases are still rising in the Olympic villages. Yes. Uh, it looks like a disorganized tournament to me, but I hope that it's going to live up the hype. Yes. We have already seen the opening ceremony. It was quite vibrant. Mm -hmm. We saw even the lighting of the torch mm -hmm. by Naomi Osaka from mm -hmm. Japan. Yeah. I hope that it's going to be 
finished because he said that probably they they are looking at ways where if they are not going to finish they could suspend it again so yes. i just hope the situation will be okay for for the people out there mm -hmm. and it's not good because i've been seeing many negative stories from the athletes i've seen it from uh, an athlete from the united states of america who is deaf and blind and she was talking about the provisions that are in that olympics village that she can't carry her own personal care assistant and then we've had other instances of teams pulling pulling out from the tournament. We had Djibouti, I guess, who pulled yes. out from the tournament. Mm -hmm. I, I just hope it's going to be an incredible one, but for me, the levels are still low. Well, if you are out there and you are a fan of these new games, we talked about baseball, softball, they'll be there and you'll be enjoying them. But uh, some of the games that we play here on Kenya, like back, sometime back when I was in primary school, coming on to high school, Three-on-three three basketball was a big thing. It was sponsored by Sprite. Do you remember that one? I remember. Yeah, it was a big tournament here in Kenya, and that is one where our teams can get onto it. If you're a fan of bicycle, bicycle riding and you can do freestyles, BMX freestyle is going to be there, and it's a usually fun, fun game. If you watch those extreme sports, BMX freestyle is one that you can go on and enjoy. And for the people who enjoy skateboarding, Judgment usually comes down to how do you complete the stairs, handrails, benches and walls. And if you are good at that, no matter what we usually see here on the street, something also you can train on and actually get on to the Olympics. But for surfing, we leave it to the people in the West and the South Americas. But now, let's bring it back home here, Sami. Mm -hmm. We've got our Team Lioness there, the rugby ladies. We've got... Uh, the boys there in rugby. Mm. What do you expect from our teams from Kenya here that have made it onto the Olympics? Well, the good thing about those teams that maybe they'll be kicking off tomorrow, I guess, in the rugby tournament. Mm -hmm. yes. They've been there. Mm -hmm. They've been there. They've seen the competition that can be posed by the likes of Fiji and Tongas and Samoas. Yeah. And so I believe that they have learned their lesson and I believe they are better prepared. They jetted in quite early enough. The logistics were quite good as compared to the Brazil one we had in 2016. Yes. And the team should be ready. I, I just hope that they are, they are going to learn the lessons that they learned before and they are going to make adjustments and mm -hmm. probably stand the world. Because that's what you expect from these nations. Even if you're not going to win the whole tournament, you're mm -hmm. still going to have some standard guys. As yeah. we've been talking about that lady from Zambia, Barbara Banda. Barbara Banda, yes. You're always going to find some new talent that are going to spring up and going to be hot property in the, yeah. in the rest of the years. And uh, the Shuja, they'll be kicking out with a team they have usually played with. Win here, win there, lose there, with there. They'll be kicking out off with the United States of America. And then they'll be playing. That one will be on Monday at 5.30 in the morning. Then uh, at 1 p.m., they'll be playing South Africa. And then on Tuesday at 5 a.m. again in the morning, they'll be playing Ireland. Let's talk about uh, Shuja, USA, South Africa, Ireland. Familiar territory. This uh -huh. is not yeah. um, a culture shock for them. Yeah. Is all the years of the seven circuits and that kind of thing have prepared them for this event. Yes. But obviously now it's it's different in the sense that you're playing for Olympic glory. You're playing to make history. Mm -hmm. So the, the stakes might be a bit higher. Mm -hmm. The whole world is focused on mm -hmm. you. Yes. Even the guys that don't normally sit up to watch the seven circuit, all across the world will now be focused on you. So maybe there is added impetus. Maybe there is more pressure. Mm -hmm. And it shouldn't really matter. Yes. Do what you've been doing. Go out there and put in your best effort. Mm. Put in all your effort that's all you need to do yeah and then the rest works itself out gradually game mm -hmm. per game yeah don't go with the pressure don't go with any other egos egos, egos yeah. if you have to keep off social media keep mm -hmm. off social media if you have to keep off mainstream media keep off mainstream media focus on mm -hmm. the assignment yeah ahead so if it's us focus on us finish with that and move on to the next assignment, mm -hmm. no uh, pressure. Earlier on, when, when we were talking about the Afro basketball qualifiers, you mm -hmm. talked about COVID-19, and one of its advantages for Team Kenya was that they went in early, mm -hmm. and there were no spectators, so they were concentrating solely 
on the game mm -hmm. and the field of play. When you look at uh, the rugby teams and the team Kenya now, mm -hmm. in that bubble, the Olympic bubble, and how they are going to play inside there, will it play to their advantage? Yeah, probably it should because mm -hmm. it works differently for different players. Yes. I mean, even in the basketball championships, you saw Miami Heat <laughs> with a young group of players, they worked well mm -hmm. in behind closed doors. So mm -hmm. probably could be the case. And the good thing about that is that mm -hmm. they are coming in, I think, I think, five days earlier. Yes. It gives them a bit of a window to try and do the drills. But for the rugby team, I guess they went there quite early now. Yes. And so they might have built up everything that they want to do. And Communication is usually easier when you're playing yeah. in behind closed doors, especially <laughs> for the coaches. They can yes. be able to shout instructions whenever mm -hmm. they want to. Yeah. And having a group of players that have played even in the worst of adversities mm -hmm. when we used to have crowds in the stadiums, mm -hmm. I guess it's going to work up well for them. Yeah. Well, the Lionesses also, their games, they'll be playing on Thursday for them. They'll be kicking off on Thursday. 29 July and their first game will be 5.30 a.m. in the morning against New Zealand and then at 1 p.m. they'll be playing Russia and then on Friday at 5 in the morning they'll be playing Great Britain. Big things that will be coming out of the Olympics, big matches that also are coming out from there. The Olympics, usually football is not a mega event but for Africans football in the Olympics is a big one for us because we've got two countries from Africa that have actually gone ahead to win the Olympic gold medal, Nigeria in 1996 and Cameroon at the year 2000. Can that fit be repeated any near time soon? Uh, I don't think during this particular Olympics, mm -hmm. and I've, I, I, if you allow me, I'll just confine myself to this particular <laughs> yeah. Olympics. I was part of the contingent that analyzed the Africa Cup of Nations under 23, hmm. and the top three teams from that tournament yeah. are the ones that qualified for this Olympics. Mm -hmm. And when I look at what they have on offer, mm -hmm. our teams from Africa, it's beautiful football, no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the current state of soccer, yes, vis-a-vis -vis our African teams mm -hmm. globally, I don't think this particular tournament has a gold medal in store for us. Mm -hmm. We would do well to clinch bronze. There's mm -hmm. no doubt about it. Yeah. And I'd be cheerfully happy for, with that. I, I'd be content with that. <laughs> gold would be a bit of a tall order, a bit of a surprise, mm -hmm. but it's, it's welcome. If we win it, football is a game of surprises. Yes. I doubt it, but if we win it, I'll buy you a pint. <laughs> <laughs> the three teams in uh, the Tokyo Olympics from Africa are Ivory Coast and they won their first match against Saudi Arabia by two goals to one. Egypt managed that draw against Spain of 0-0 and then South Africa lost to Japan by two goals to one. One big match that uh, was a highlight as the, the games were kicking off had got to be Brazil versus Germany as they won by four goals to two and Richarlison, the Brazilian, scoring a hat-trick in that game, Sami. Mm -hmm. Richarlison seemed to have enjoyed that game. Yeah, he did, and he scored it in 29 minutes, so yeah. it was a very good game for him. Mm -hmm. But I guess the highlight of that game was definitely da Danilo Alves, mm -hmm. Dani Alves, yes. who made his appearance at 38 years old, mm -hmm. playing in a, as a right-back positioning. Doesn't look young. He I doesn't, mean, and yeah. he was actually fast. You, mm -hmm. you look at some of the balls that he was sweeping in from the right-hand side, yeah. he looked better than those young players in that team. And for Brazil, with them being the defending champions, of course, yes. they won it in 2016. It's going to take something to beat those lads because they were so good against Germany, which looked a little bit petrified. They looked shocked. Amos Piper, probably the villain of the game, he had a lot to handle. Playing against Mac Ma Matthias Cunha, whom you've seen already at Halter Berlin, performing very well yeah. against the likes of Paulinho for Bayer Leverkusen. And then Richarlison, who came in straight from the Copa America, that was something good that the coach did for Brazil, bringing in Richarlison straight in from the Copa America, and then he comes in, banks a hat trick in the first 30 minutes to win your game. Yeah. Brazil are going to be the favourites definitely for this championship. Well, we'll be we will be watching those and many more as these uh, games go ahead. At this time, uh, the women's football tournament, New Zealand, is no, the United States is actually leading New Zealand by one goal to nil at the moment and uh, at uh, tennis the men singles first round uh, Novak Djokovic has managed to win <coughs> against Dylan in 6-2 uh, 6-2 six two, six two 
in uh, the first round of the men's singles in the tennis tournament so far. And uh, currently, the men's road race final is actually has come to an end with a gold going to Raul. Sorry for a moment there. It has gone to Raul Carapaz of Ecuador, who has won the men's road race cycling there in a time of uh, 6 hours, uh, 5 minutes and 26 seconds. And then Van Avert of Belgium has come second there to clinch silver in that road race in a six hour six minutes and then slovenia's tl polka has also come with bronze in six minutes six hours six minutes and 33 seconds there that those are some of the completed results from the tokyo olympics as they are coming your way so far we'll be giving all those updates as we are talking about the olympics is one event that we wait for because it gives us everything that comes on my director is telling me that my time is up but you've got to say that Olaguna Solskjaer has finally gotten a contract extension and finally has got Jadon Sancho to Manchester United. Yeah, he expected that. He made a post yeah. in March 26 that he would get a contract <laughs> extension. We've all yes. seen the progress that he can make at yeah. Man United. Uh -huh. Probably fans feel better right now that in a good position to win games, they're playing attractive football under him. Yes. And him getting Jaron Sancho, you're getting in. As a Bundesliga fan, I've seen him play. Yeah. And I've seen him play on the left-hand side, on the right-hand side. He yes. can cut in through the middle. <laughs> you're getting a wing wizard. Yeah. So the wing backs in the Premier League should be ready. Yeah. He's going to terrorize the league. And then England lost to Italy in the Euro finals. That was to be expected. <laughs> that was to be expected. That was to be expected. That was to be expected. Yes. <laughs> you look at the kind of the mm. quality of Italian mm. football at that tournament. Yes. Goodness. They were playing like the best Italian sides we've seen throughout history. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. England were also doing well. I have mm. not seen such a polished English, English side since the 1990s. Yes. The Glen Hoddle team uh -huh. of France 98, to be precise. Mm -hmm. But um, <coughs> this was... And they had the home advantage. Goodness, I've never seen England so united behind a cause. Mm -hmm. uh, they almost deserved to win it, but no. With 76% possession during open play from the Italians, yes. you can say they were worthy winners. Mm -hmm. And it ended 1-1 at full time, then it went to extra time, then it went to extra time penalties because still at the end of extra time, it was 1-0. And Italians won it on, on penalties. It's sad that there was racism involved after such a beautiful tournament. People hurling abuse at the three English players who were black that lost out on their penalty shootouts. But all in all, it was a beautiful tournament and the best team won. Sami, I know this is not your favorite conversation. I'll just give you, you give me just a, a good that can make you happy. Hamilton winning the Grand Prix mm -hmm. after getting a 10 second penalty. Yeah, I was really <laughs> delighted for him because, yeah. I mean, he, he would have lost a huge margin if yes. probably Verstappen would have won it. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm sad again that racism got its way into Lewis Hamilton this time round. Yes. It was a really feisty competition between Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton going into the first few corners. And a collision of sorts mm -hmm. in the first 10 corners, I think it was in turn 10, where he got that collision from. And there's been lots of vitriol on Lewis Hamilton. The expenses that Red Bull have suffered, $1.8 million for the car that Red Bull now have to pay for. Yes. Uh, I'm happy for Lewis Hamilton that he can come back from those conditions. He can get the penalty <coughs> and come back and win the race yes. at his home ground in Silverstone for the eighth consecutive time. Yes. Happy for him and I think the title challenge is on. That is where we come to the end of the touchline here on Y254. I'm Robert Osoro. Big thank you by Tyrus Gitai here, who has been my co host, and also a fan favorite, Sami Gitai, who also came here for all the discussions about basketball and the Olympics. I'm Robert Osoro. Enjoy the best of your broadcast here on Y254.